One, two, three. We are. Yes, we're recording. We're we're up what forty feet up in the tree recording. Like twenty five feet. <laughs> it feels like <laughs> <laughs> it feels a lot higher than that. Yeah. But, all right, guys, we are twenty five feet up in a tree, and before we're done with this video, we're gonna show you knots. We're gonna show you the equipment. We're gonna show you everything that you may need to get familiar enough with it so that if you're gonna go start working at a tree company, when you walk the first step into the door, you at least are experienced or at least familiar enough with the equipment so you know what you're looking at. And from there, you're gonna to have to take your training to the next level. And we got my buddy Keith Kalfas coming in to help us figure it all out. So what are we waiting for? But let's do it. All right, guys, we are gonna be walking through the basics today, right, Keith? What do we have? All right, here we have two sets of tree climbing gear we have a cougar weaver saddle it's more of an advanced saddle and then here we have another weaver saddle it's a basic so there's double loops on the legs with a floating d-ring which is it's an awesome stance uh, saddle very very strong okay so these are saddles yeah for climbing okay the, sla the saddles are equipped with flip lines it's a steel a steel braided flip line okay and it's a lot stronger and safer in the tree this is actually triple action. One, two, three. Here we have the buck strap. Well, this is, I'm sorry, this is a rope bridge, but this is called a floating D block. Okay. It's a dual locking mechanism. Let's get in tight so on one, this. One, two, see? Yep. Do oh. that again. This, yeah, do, do it again. Let's see it one more time. You're so fast. This it's holds all of your body weight in the tree, and it's got a micro pulley on it. So when you click one, and two and you want to make sure this thing is always clean check this point of attachment right here every single time before you go on the tree okay and then these things are only rated for every six months you're supposed to actually replace it or retire it mm. because it's holding your body weight so never ever ever climb with old gear and then also one other thing never never ever climb with a carabiner that you got from the local hardware store this is rated for climbing. There's different types of carabiners rated for rigging and for climbing. And a cheap carabiner will just fall apart and break on you. So there's a there's a massive difference. Okay. That's, you can pick up a enough. truck with this. Inspect the ropes. Make sure these double knots are nice and tight. No tears or frays in the ropes. Flip this around. Remember, all this is inspected. You're making sure everything's working. Yep. It snaps back. Clip it onto the D ring. Now, you should always have two points of attachment while you're in the tree at all times. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to start somewhere, right? And the most important thing is if you are going to start, you make sure you do it safe, okay? What is this thing, Keith? What is this rope called? Is this a secondary lifeline? Yeah, so this here is the buck strap. I'd say just to be safe, just have them both connected at the same time at the same length. So the reason that there's two of these is when you're going up in a tree and you get to a crotch, one stays connected and then the second one goes over the crotch and at no point are you to ever be unbucked in the tree saying, oh, I, I can do this. No, you're always bucked in at all times. Bucked no in means what. connected in, roped yeah. in. Bucked right? in and connected in. Okay. And when you're bucking and you're always looking and making sure and double checking that everything is always fully connected. So we've got your saddle on. Now you got to go through the ropes. What do you do before you start throwing ropes up in trees? And what what do these ropes mean actually? Maybe we should yeah. start with that, Keith. So this right here is your lifeline, and this is your work line for roping and rigging. And the difference is this one holds your body, and this is for climbing up and down the tree. This one is for lowering branches safely to the ground, okay? You should never switch the ropes out. Your lifeline is always your lifeline until it becomes frayed or scarred or ripped or, or compromised, then you should retire it and get a brand new lifeline. And your work line is always your work line. And you also inspect that the same as well. If there's any uh, rips or tears or anything that's compromised, you get a brand new one. So you never switch them out. Okay, spurs. Yeah, so uh, these are a basic set of climbing gaffs. These are old school, but they work tremendously great. The longer ones here are for trees. Shorter ones you see are for climbing telephone poles like the uh, the city electric guys. 
These are sick. They're lighter weight, they're more expensive. And uh, comfort in the tree is extremely important. Oh wow, those are super so, duty. See how it's got Velcro, soft. All of this for a tire swing, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. A lot of work for a tire swing. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go up the tree. Got my safety gear on, uh, hard hat, spikes, saddle, everything's checked. And I have a flip line and a buck strap. Just to be safe, I have two straps on the tree. And I have two lifelines and a work line. Step, step, flip, step, step, flip. All right, I've come to the sucker in the tree, pulling out my handsaw and making sure this never touches this if a saw or a knife even touches this, it can just split under pressure. So. Now you're going up to set the lifeline, right? Yeah. Okay. Right here, this branch right here. Yeah. Even though it's a small branch, before I cut that, I'm going to yell clear because there's a drop zone and nobody can be in it. Clear. Clear. Is that is that the right yeah, response? All clear. All clear. Right? I throw it down away from the ropes into a drop zone. Got it. How far up do you gotta go to set a lifeline? In most cases as high as you safely can. Clear? Clear, all clear. And I've seen Keith up at the top, so some pretty scary trees. Wow, you're up there. There is not a chance I'm going up that high. That's just not for me. You're, you're definitely going up that high. I am not going up that high, son. It's not happening. I would never get myself back down again. So I went up in the tree. Okay. And I threw the lifeline around the crotch of the tree and I tied off a Blake's hitch. How do you tie that knot? You should know this knot, but then you can upgrade into mechanical ascenders and zigzags and Petzl hardware and all these fancy things. Mm -hmm. But you should know how to do this because if you go buy some fancy $300 mechanical ascender, and it gets broken or compromised in the tree, and now all of a sudden you don't know how to tie the most basic knot, you're stuck in the tree because you didn't take the basic steps first. Remember, this arm's length. Okay. I'm gonna take these two and bring them together, and I'm gonna go behind, right? Okay. Never in front, but behind, and I'm gonna wrap it around four times. One. Two. Three. Fourth. And then go and take these four loops and adjust them so it looks nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And then let the tail end fall behind. Mm -hmm. So back down around, back up through two. So come around and you take just the first two, mm -hmm. create some space. I can usually do this very fast on my own, but take some space mm -hmm. and run the tail end of the rope through this, mm -hmm. pull out all the slack. And then make sure this system is nice and clean. Pull tight. And see how there's mm -hmm. there's a bite on here around the back. Yep. And then that's what allows you to, but it's not finished because you have to pull up the slack like this mm -hmm. in the tree. And the name of that knot again is? This is the Blake's Hitch. Blake's Hitch. Okay. So, or the monkey fist. Or the monkey fist, that's right. All right. So pull the slack out, pull the tail end of the rope up while you sit your butt down in the tree and test it to make sure that it holds. And then you tie the figure eight knot. So this doesn't back out on you and it doesn't run. And now you are free to work in the tree like this. All right, Stan, you're about to go up. Yep. You have your ground saddle, spikes, flip line. 
your lifeline's already set. We're gonna tie you in, take the tail end of the rope, and now you're gonna tie your Blake's hitch. Sit down in the rope a little bit. See, it's not sliding. That's a good, good knot, okay? Now what? Now we're going up the tree. All right, so you're going to, like you're literally, like you're humping the tree, but in that quick action, you flip up. Boom, right there. All right, now take two steps. Baby steps, yeah. One, two. Now you see how you're putting your body weight back? Yep. Just relax and step like you're walking up the tree. Now okay. tend the line. Tend the line. So By that pulling the, yeah. Okay. So now I'm ready to go up again, right? Yep. And you can just keep your hands on the flip line. Yep. Yeah. And then yep. tend the rope. Okay, so this is my view from up here. As I'm going up, I'm tending the rope. So pulling down, pulling up at the same time, making sure my slack is good. I take my one, two baby steps, flipping my rope up. Now I gotta tend my rope, which tending the rope means and then let's see okay i got my rope tight i'll take the two baby steps get myself comfy now let's hump the tree hump it. And with that, the GoPro went back down to the ground. I guess it didn't want to climb to the top with me. But I do want to say in a serious note, you guys, don't spike a tree unless it's scheduled to come down. This one will become firewood this winter. Hey, if you do one of those cool, like, repelling moves, let me know. I think he's gonna do it now. How do I how do I rappel down? Squeeze that. Yeah. Now, relax. Flip it that way. Yeah. And now take your fingers there and just little bites. Yeah. Yeah. Now kick down and. Ch -ch 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 -ch. So the monkey fist, what I'm doing to go down is I literally squeeze and pull. And I'm like, oh. And that's how I go down. Right, there we go. Way cooler. <laughs> 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 so that's the way a pro comes yeah. down a tree. The amateur does the baby steps. All right, Keith, you're going to show us how to properly put your rope away. Yeah, so when you put your ropes away, you don't want to just stuff them in a bag because then it'll be a real pain to take them out next time. Yeah. So it just take five minutes to fold up your ropes. So you hang it around like this, kind of like Tarzan. This is the way I do it. I go a full arm length, loop it around me like that. And I do another one. 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 See this? Okay. Now take it off like this. You got this end hanging. Now watch. Go around like this. Make sure it's nice and clean. And run wraps on it. <laughs> then, like this. This this if you do it at the opposite end from the carabiner then you can hang it or you can just go like this and hang it these guys go to find out more information on all of what we're about to show these guys keith make sure you go to the isa the international society of arbor culture then reach out and find a mentor or a tree care safety professional a tcsp then also oh yeah and learn about the ansi standards z133 
because a lot of these standards were literally written in blood by people actually getting injured. So that's why all this stuff is available. All right, guys, that's the end of our video. That was Keith Calfes walking us through how to do the basics so that it, when you guys go in, if you're gonna start working at a tree company, when you walk in the door, at least you'll be familiar with some of the equipment, gears, techniques, and what they mean and how they actually get applied. But what you do with that information you found today is up to you to take it to the next level. Make sure that you get a mentor, make sure you follow all safety protocols, and make sure that you learn a lot more than what we taught you in this video. We just want you to be safe. That's all we got for you today. God bless. Go get them, you guys. And we will see you on another one. And if you want more really cool videos, of course, go over to Keith Kalfas, the Landscape Employee Trip. He's got tons of really good stuff there. He's actually been a mentor to me for a long time. He's helped. He was the one that got me started in YouTube in the first place. And that's it for today. See you in the next one.